hello guys welcome to my first video in this particular video I wish to introduce this relatively new method of numerical modeling in civil engineering called the discrete element method I'm sure many of you are more familiar with the finite element modeling method so the discrete element uh, modeling method is is uh, similar is like the finite element modeling method although the principles are different so I'm I'm going to introduce the principles so that at least there is a distinction between discrete element modeling method model discrete element modeling method and finite element modeling method now at least from literature this method has been in existence maybe between three to five decades ago this is not a historical an accurate historical account but just so you have an idea of of the of the evolution or development of this method however this method is computationally very expensive that means you need a very powerful computer in the current days maybe you can talk about a supercomputer and uh, maybe with the latest versions core i7 maybe to core i9 and you need uh, a good ram uh, a good ram maybe uh, uh, i'd say maybe from 32 gb upwards though uh, theoretically even 8 gb can work but then uh, that kind of computer will take very long to calculate then the disk space because it stores uh, the cal computation in data in terms of video so you need large com large storage maybe one terabyte and so on now this method was initially introduced for agricultural engineering uh, solutions because they work with grains and powders a lot so welcome to to this video I hope you enjoy and at least I hope you also understand because that is my aim so I wish to keep it very simple uh, welcome so what is DEM uh, the discrete element method or in short DEM is a particle scale numerical method for modeling the bulk behavior of granular materials and many geomaterials such as coal, earth, soil, rocks, aggregates, pellets tablets and powders so uh, like I introduced before uh, grains because we are talking about granular materials grains so for agricultural engineering people they work with grains and powders a lot and also uh, can the method may also be useful in the process of cement production because they move powders and uh, and uh, granular material around a lot in the process of cement production and for in agricultural engineering because during harvesting they move grains and powders a lot in the process too so the forces during the, the during the the carrying or transportation uh, need to be calculated so that the truck carriers uh, are uh, are well designed uh, to resist the forces so for civil engineering purposes maybe we talk about soil rocks and aggregates as good application now the granular material or the particle the particle the representative particles can be of uniform size uniform size uniform size as you can see with this or of different sizes different sizes different sizes as you can see different sizes as you can see from here now example of commercial softwares we have EDM EDM here sorry EDM this is an actual model in EDM and uh, there is the other methods like PFC particle flow code and UDEC so if you are interested you can google these names and i'm sure it uh, it will pop up and you have a rough idea of uh, what they are so so dm is mostly 3d of course a sphere because the particle is a spherical so a sphere 
as you know is 3D so of course uh, needs needs time to calculate so uh, the the particles are mostly spheres that is the most common and most convenient however theoretically you can uh, have other regular or irregular shapes but these other shapes are uh, depending on the software you intend to use uh, you need additional effort to generate them uh, for the software that are in, a, are in existence uh, spheres are e more easily generated but if you need for some other reason maybe you need other shapes then you might need additional effort uh, to to input them into the software so other regular maybe if you decide to use a triangle or a rectangle or square or maybe hexagon up to you depends on whatever it is you want to model yeah you can use other also other irregular shapes like maybe the shape of a bean is possible uh, maybe that's not a very good shape of a bean let's see maybe if you like to use the shape of a bean maybe like this perhaps this is a better shape of a bean yeah bean or kidney shape it's all up to you yeah and then the particles may be of uniform size as can be seen with this or of of uh, the distributions that are common like normal distribution log normal distribution uh, random distribution or you can have your own user defined user defined you can input a mathematical formula for your uh, particles so once you decide that you're using spheres then you need to know whether the spheres are of one size or whatever distribution you need you can use the user defined distribution uh, there are other distributions like chi square poisons and so on so forth so it depends on you but the choice of distribution depends on the material behavior that needs to be modeled so if you test and find that one uh, distribution models the behavior well then you can go for it and to better understand the uh, discrete element method we need to review uh, the finite element I am sure many people are more familiar with the finite element method so the learning is from known to unknown so the we talk about the finite element finite element 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 method finite element method so in finite element method the object is divided into finite elements or finite volumes in case of 3d models elements and volumes can be triangular or rectangular or square which are the square rectangular and triangular are the most common again in here you can have other shapes you want you could use hexag if for some reason you need a hexagon probably you can generate although this one's um, a little bit more difficult you can use maybe a trapezium if you want trapezoidal uh, shape or rhombus whatever shape you need is possible but typically triangular rectangular or square shapes are uh, give uh, are good enough so in the in the fem we, we use constitutive laws employing integration uh, uh, for the solution and then the methods is based on continuity and compatibility therefore the finite element mesh cannot separate now this is important and I need to explain it a little bit more so um, let me isolate to two, uh, two elements like this in this case these elements are triangular so let's say after the application of the forces then the deformed the mesh deforms like that sorry let me
so after deformation maybe the, de the mesh deforms like this this is the deformed mesh now so let's call this the mesh on this side A and B the elements so the principle is continuity that means even if there is deformation the where the where the element A stops is where element B starts that's the continuity and compatibility that means whatever happens the elements cannot separate so if there is fracture these elements cannot cannot detach from each other so you can see a, a fracture pattern this is not possible so this is limiting so this is why people uh, prefer a discrete element method because in discrete element method we are able to see the fracture and there is provision the contact models can actually models can actually the contact models can actually defer, det detach can actually detach and separate and then you are able to see a fracture so this method finite element methods are is commonly referred to as finite element however there are other uh, minor uh, differences for example this is finite difference method finite difference method where should i write okay finite night difference 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 method and then there's also beam beam element method so beam element method but usually all of them are lumped together just as finite element method so example of the softwares in this area are plaxis midas abacus riddle and maybe from the principle you can think of others i, I, I am sure so